We're back on the field and we're gonna keep a little bit more can keep a distance from the from the site and this shows up and it's trash. I'm calling this movie Chris Revenge or Chris's Revenge. Not to like put any pressure on him. Uh, and I do have some uh, cool details about that old coin. Uh, it's getting more and more exciting by the day. Let's see if we can find some more stuff out of here. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, so we still have some plenty of hours to have fun with. Closer and closer to the water. This one shows up. But it can be junk from the 1900s. But that wouldn't fit into most of the other things we find here. Let me give it a brush. It would appear that there is some kind of pattern underneath the glass. Or maybe I'm just hallucinating. But it looks fairly modern. Hard to tell but nothing to scream and jump. For. That's almost one hour with no diggable signals and this button shows up. You know as with many good places the, the soil is full of iron and it makes you crazy because it goes boom 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 all the time. It makes you tired. So my settings for those interested is uh, the fast program. I don't do anything else. I just use 17 kilohertz 17.858 kilohertz and i go really slow and i try to kind of lurk out the small tiny signals in between the stub and the stub is kind of hard but you do get a lot of iron that you have to work you really have to work hard through it and you have to walk very slowly it has nothing to do with depth it has to do with signal separation and i'm really glad i have the deus Reminds me of the field in the Czech Republic where I found a couple of nice old coins and it was also full of iron and after four or five hours you are like a rave party in your mind, your brain. But um, we're motivated and we're gonna keep up. Right, here's an example. I haven't dug it yet, I've just um, marked it and I've ramped up the volume on the headset. Hopefully you'll hear, hear something. This Now that signal came actually quite cheap, but it still has it still has some iron tone to it. But it's a, it's of course a digging signal. You will have to dig it, of course. And there are many misconceptions with regards to depth. You don't need depth in a field like this. Everything is in the plow, in the soil, topsoil. A shovel. I always give myself some space. I don't want to nick something with the shovel. Okay, that should be it, I guess. Yeah, there it is. See? No signal in the hole. It's out. It's iffy. Irony. But it's not there. It's not there. Okay. But suddenly the iron is gone. Signal sounds a lot crispier.
It's in the hand. Okay. It's out of the hand. <laughs> Is it you? Yeah, it's you. So, what started out as a very iffy irony kind of thing. It's a small copper fragment. And this was an easy target. Chris has made his own little investigations. Hopefully it didn't fall off from the wall. What are you trying to demonstrate? Okay. Yeah, another iffy iron. Yeah. Very iffy iron. Can hardly hear it. And on the top it's clear and crisp. That's the depth. depth we have in this fast. Yeah, I know. You don't need that. It's probably a piece of oil. <laughs> yeah. Now this is a surface. This is right in the surface. Right. Lead. Yes. Quite a big piece of lead that is. Yeah. But not so easy to find when it was. That was very around. strange because that's a thick piece and that should be given a lot more depth in fast than five centimeters. So. I don't know what can explain that actually. This video is focusing a lot on <laughs> the, the detecting itself for yes. once, not <laughs> only finds <laughs> and <laughs> jokes and beer. <laughs> but you know, some people might think that's interesting too, you know. Okay, we have to keep it up. We're working hard. Well, another two hours has passed and I'm, uh, I'm keeping to the plan. I'm staying away from the church. And this brings me back to the UK. No, it doesn't. Does it? No, it doesn't. Ah, who can do such a thing? Leave a piece of foil shaped as a quarter cut penny. That's brutal. That's brutal. You can see it's folded there, it's not a coin. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. We have shifted to the potato field. A little bit less iron, a little bit more quiet, and a copper shilling. Can't ID it at the moment, but. Oh, man. Oh, it's home. Uh, yeah. it's thing, it? On our way home, I do it. I get it. I get one. Oh, let me have a look. What can it be? What can it be? I'll give it some water. Ah, you're happy, happy. Det tänk att det är hårt. Also här har vi plöjt i hundrevis av år. Ja. Tre, två, tre hundre år. Sölvete? Ekte penger? I can't ID it right now. I think it's C7. Christian seven. I'm not sure, it's not a monogram I'm very very familiar with, but it looks like C7. But we'll have a look at home. Cool. We were actually on our way home. We had we we didn't we weren't that lucky today. But you know this is cool. We'll we'll have the answer shortly. Well, we're ending the day with a little sightseeing. Look at that gorgeous church. Now, we got the permission to hunt this land, but it's a waste of time. And I will explain to you later why. But first, I'm gonna have a look at that church. Now you see that green over there. That's how this land is originally. That's how this land would look like at the time of that church. But have a look at the fields. They're all planed. This has been bulldozed uh, probably after the Second World War. We have, we have been digging for an hour and we've only found modern trash. Not one 
find over a hundred year old in the whole field and the farmer warned us about it many people have been detecting here before and leaving it empty-handed but you know forget about that for a while sorry my memory card was full forget about that for a while let's have a look at this church I don't know much about it to be honest but it's bloody old and of course we wanted to hunt these fields look at this view great view we are a couple of hours from where we've been hunting previous today or digging is the correct word but we just had to see this place Chris do you know when it's when it was built 1200 something 1200 something the same time as Magnus Lagerbøte. This church is from the same era as our coin. That kind of gives you some perspective of how society was back then. The church is of course protected area. Did you go inside? No, it was If you look at the roof, you see how they use the middle of the tree as roof because it's filled with um, moisture uh, from the tree and it would, uh, would stay in um, rain and stuff. And where? The, where? 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 On the roof. Yeah, you mean those planks? Yes. All right. That's not it's neat. only center wood? Yes, center wood because that's uh, part of the tree that can take more, more rain than... More moisture? Yeah. Uh. Obviously, in the old days, they knew how to build things. But that wood, of course, is not. Yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. And <laughs> all that is new. The wood, that's not from the year 1200. I don't know. Not necessarily, but. Can't be. We have all wooden oh. churches in original condition in Norway. Yeah? But don't you think like the door and stuff is changed? The door obviously looks like more 1500. Especially that with old? The lock. Wow, they don't build stuff like this anymore, do they? But you know, take, take a look at this door. This door will withstand rain and storm for another 500 years. Yeah, look at this craftsmanship. This is done by hand. This is no IKEA. Lovely color as well. It's bone dry. That's the keyhole. You probably have the key to that, the one you found. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, that was a, that was a padlock. We're gonna stop by that other church as well. Yeah, it's twin, okay. twin sister church. Bye bye church and uh, crappy fields. The farmer was right. He said, "Oh, you're only gonna find the horseshoes," and we did. Right, sorry, we never got to that last church. Um, it was too far away and it was getting late and to be honest, I'm exhausted. Here's the finds from our first farm, the good farm. <laughs> Here's the finds from, from the last farm. And when two people spend one hour in one field, and they don't find any find that's more than 100 years old and the farmer says that this place is kind of plowed and bulldozed and so on then skip it but it was a beautiful church though the coin a little bit of water and a little bit of dishwashing liquid for the time being a couple of other interesting finds today this uh, it's a double button 1900s with a glass so but it was fun 
this is like don't discard it if you haven't looked at it yet uh, my experience tells me that don't throw anything away that you not completely sure is junk lead ring god knows old don't know what it is and there's the coin i was planning on giving you a little update on my on my special find uh, but i'm too exhausted but i will however show you this remember this book right when i started this hobby i really never thought that i would find coins from that early in the book now this is magnus lagabot lagabote magnus the law amender he created uh, a lot of the laws, a lot of the principles of laws that still exists today. That's why he is illustrated like he is, writing documents, thinking. He was a wise man. He created trade agreements with the Germans. He he uh, avoided war with the Danes. He managed to balance the power, the ever-going struggle between the church and the king. Very, very popular king. So it can be him we found the coin from or his son most likely his son and <laughs> this will give you an idea about his uh, reign and what const what kind of constitutes his story and legacy he was very young when he was killed when when he was king only 12 years old and uh, he didn't really reign he, it was his his uh, wife from scotland um, and that was set up by his father of course to improve the relationship with the with the scots uh, that just shows you how he was not only a good lawmaker this guy he was also extreme good diplo dip he was he had very good foreign policy but this guy unfortunately he 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 uh, he managed to screw up a lot of the good stuff that his father did uh, the, the the germans got pissed off with him the 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 bishop uh, escaped from the country he broke a leg he was he was not very popular and he died only 31 years old but that doesn't mean that the coin if the coin is from him <laughs> that can still be a very very important coin because it's from a transitional phase it's actually minted most probably in 1280 while his father was still alive so imagine Magnus Lagerbøte introducing the new coinage inspired from the Edwards in England with the cross, with the portraits. And this guy is then the first Norwegian king that's supposed to bring that tradition on. He's, he's given the responsibility, he's the first king to adopt this new system of coinage. And, and we know that he didn't have a lot of a uh, high degree of autonomy, that he was uh, governed by his, his surroundings and his wife and his counselors and so on. It raises the question, well, how much did he really, uh, did he really influence the choice of the coin, coinage that moves, that, that comes uh, after, you know, with him later, not from the transitional types, but from the more original types that are more common. So I'll get back to that once we have an ID, but you know, regardless if it's Eirik Magnusson or uh, Lagerböte, we have a very, very cool coin and a very important find uh, in in Norwegian history, like in coin history. Now let's try to see if we can ID the one silver we found today. I feel really bad for Chris. He's been there now three, four times, I don't know. <laughs> he hasn't found anything, I can joke about it, but... I really hope he, I really hoped he was to find something nice today. And this one came in the end. I mean, we were on our way home. So, pure luck as always. I'm going to try to clean it up and see if we can get an ID on it. Okay, while while that coin is soaking, I will I will give you some of my research. Remember Chetil when he was going through the book, he was referring to 227. This is the son, Eirik uh, Magnusson, the one we think it might be not the good king, not Magnus uh, Lagerböte, but the other one. Okay, so I was browsing the internet last, uh, late last night and I found a PhD thesis about coinage in Trondheim. 
uh, on a completely different subject but I did find some tables uh, of, of, uh, of um, number of coins found in by the different kings in churches so this is this is found this is finds in churches it's not uh, uh, it, it does not include detector finds but they are very few anyway so this is uh, Magnus Lagerböte the the you know the great king the law amender um, and we're talking about full pennies and he has four different kinds here 2, 15, 16, 17, 18 that's a full one penning and they are numbered 1, 2, 3 and 4 so in the table here that's coin 1, 2, 3 and 4 and these are different counties including two Swedish and they simply just count how many of each coin that has been found and the thesis was written in 2006 so in churches by Magnus you have a total of 2, 4, 8 uh, one penny coins found. Right, I'm running out of battery so I have to do this fast and I didn't really intend to go into this material but okay Magnus the Great King eight full pennies which is one of the candidates still found in churches by 2006. Now why do we think that this might not be Magnus. Well, this is Eric. This is a coin from his son, the only photo I can find from it. And you will see the star O R E O R O I star R E O I. And this is the cross. And there is the cross. Here is that little control mark. There is the little control mark. You know, that's what con constitutes that, 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 that is what we found our hypothesis on many people still argue that this might be a Magnus but the the control mark is really what strengthens the alternative hypothesis right but what about what about uh, coins from Eric Magnuson the Sun we only have one coin here that's potentially it and that's this one, two, two, seven. Remember, uh, reference two, two, seven. How many is found? How many is found in churches by two thousand and six, including Bohuslän in Sweden, Jämtland in Sweden, and all other Norwegian counties. Brrr, zero. very significant I know there might I have some articles claiming other finds have been done in Sweden and so on but if it really turns out that no specimens have been find found by Eric by this transitional special penny coin that he minted uh, while his father was still alive that makes it a lot more significant than if it is a Magnus Lagerböte, although Magnus Lagerböte is a much more famous king and he's was, he was not very successful. From a numismatic point of view, that find is certainly more significant. And we'll get back to this, I'm sure. Let's turn to today's uh, little coin find. And as I suspected on the field, we have a... Christ this is the coin, huh? this is not the book. <laughs> Christian the seventh, two shilling, uh, minted in Denmark. I can't get a date. The date is supposed to be here, but that's all mushy. Um, I can't get it later, but this is not a significant find at all. It was fun, cool. I haven't seen the monogram before. Christian the seventh, silver, you know, two shilling, 1700s, somewhere in the 1700s. This one isn't even worth uh, $10, but that's not the point. But it was still a very cool coin. I uh, haven't seen it before. And that was, it kind of saved the day from a find's perspective. So uh, from that field we have Frederick 3, Frederick 4, Frederick 5, now Christian 7. We also have, yeah. And uh, this uh, Magnus and uh, Eirik story. That is it. Um, 
exhausted. Uh, <laughs> a lot of detecting. And uh, I'll keep you posted. Uh, we're going out this weekend. Uh, uh, maybe finding a new spot. Um, and um, I'll see you then. Happy hunting and thank you so much for all your nice comments. I try to reply on, on some. Uh, thank you very much for watching my videos and keeping up with my crazy channel for all these years. Uh, I've had all more than a quarter of a million views now, so, uh, now and uh, I, I still think it's fun. <laughs> so, uh, cheers and um, happy hunting!